Welcome to Genesis Unleashed. In a well-publicized creation versus evolution debate, atheist Bill Nye, the science guy, went head-to-head -head with biblical creationist Ken Ham. The topic of the debate was, is creation a viable model of origins in today's scientific era? Right. That was the topic. What we're going to do here is review the debate and provide some information that answers the question in the affirmative. Creation is absolutely a viable model of origins in today's modern scientific, modern scientific era. Let's get right into it. Sure. Right. Well, the first part was where he each gave a, a five-minute opening section which introduced Ham's and Nye's views, and, and then they moved into a 30-minute presentation where each of them had time to develop their ideas and, and make their points against each other. Right. right. Ken Ham's 30 minutes covered the basics of the creation worldview, including the creation time frame, the difference between operational and historical science, and the difference between natural selection and evolution of new kinds. Right. He demonstrated how the biblical record explains the phenomena we see in the world today, such as uh, intelligent design behind life, you see that there, animals reproducing after their kind, and all humans as one race. Right. In effect, he showed that what we observe in the world today matches what we expect to find if the Bible is true. Exactly. Yeah. Now, in Bill Nye's presentation, he gave a long list of arguments that supposedly right. pose problems for creationists. Uh, most of these problems relate, of course, to his belief in uniformitarianism, that the rates we measure in, in systems today have always been the same. Uh, of course, if he'd uh, done, been more acquainted with creationist literature, he, he would have known that the, these have been, you know, explained uh, long ago, actually. That's right, yeah. Our debate analysis article at creation.com has a comprehensive list of the evidences Nye brought up uh, to back up his evolutionary view. It's got links to detailed rebuttals to his views, of course, mm -hmm. and, and we don't have time to go through them all here today, so, but what we're going to do uh, to encourage you, especially if you feel that there's no science to support creation or no science against evolution, is to take the time to, to look some of them up. That's one of the challenges with debates, limited time. Right. Just because a debater doesn't have the time to refute challenges uh, made against his position in a debate doesn't mean there isn't a refutation. Right. And you saw some of that in the debate. We also note that Nye badly played the man, not the issue. <laughs> Here he kept referring to biblical creation as Ken Ham's model. It has nothing to do with Ken. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the view derived from the objective analysis of the biblical text, right. and it's the historic view of the Christian church. It's been it, it's supported now by years of scientific research done by people all over the world. In this video, we'll show you that his attacks have already been refuted by science. Right. But even in this video, we're not going to take uh, the time to detail every single challenge that Bill and I threw out. We'd be here for hours. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're going to put clickable links uh, for more details up on the screen. That's right. If you want more details about anything that we're summarizing here, click the link in this video. The video will pause and the link will open a new page. When you're finished reading, just come back to the video and hit play to continue. Right. Now, an argument Bill Nye used was that there are ice cores with 680,000 layers, right. each formed yeah. in a summer-winter uh, cycle, and he claimed this disproves the, the biblical time frame. Nye seems blind to the assumptions that he and evolutionary scientists make about ice cores. One of the assumptions is that each layer actually records only one year, and that the rates of deposition have always been constant. Right. However, research shows that you can't make that assumption. <laughs> Layers in multiple ice core samples in close proximity to each other don't always correlate. Yeah, exactly. It's well known that snowfall in, in snowstorms can, can vary greatly. Right. Uh, one area can receive tens of centimeters of snow, while another area, you know, not very far away, hardly gets any. Uh, here's an article that shows how catastrophic storm-dominated accumulation of snow and ice can accumulate, uh, can account for a rapid accumulation of layers. So see uh, creation.com ice cores. As a matter of fact, we did an, an episode on our TV show on the rapid accumulation of ice in Greenland, right. something Ken also mentioned. Right. The shows are, they're online now, and you just click this link to watch it here. It's right. uh, season two, episode 24. Now, on the show, we discussed the Lost Squadron, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. A group of six P-38 uh, planes, uh, fighter planes, and, and two B-17 bombers that crash-landed on the east uh, side of Greenland in 1942. Now, after a number of salvage attempts in the 80s and 90s, they, they finally found the planes, right. but they yeah. were buried under 75 meters, 250 feet of ice. So uh, the impression the general public has that the, the buildup of glacial ice takes thousands of, uh, of years uh, for just a few meters, um, I mean, if you, if you went by that rate, 
you know, uh, yeah. the average rate of accumulation would be uh, one meter per year if you, you, you look at how much is built up over that time. Yeah. At that rate, ice cores that evolutionists like Nye yeah. say take, uh, they're, they're tens of thousands of years old, would only represent about 2,000 years of accumulation. <laughs> that, 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 the one from, with the plains there. Right. Uh, so Nye's trust in uniformitarianism is refuted by this. Right as it is from many other examples, from, from the science that he claims to love. That's For right. more details on the Lost Squadron, you can visit creation.com slash squadron. Right. Now, as a side note, despite what Bill might think, biblical creationists love science too, right? Absolutely. Well, furthermore, uh, of the founders of modern uh, science, uh, most of them were creationists. Uh, you can see creation.com scientists for more information on that. Now, as far as we know, Creation Ministries International employs more PhD scientists than any other Christian ministry. Hmm. That is, people far more qualified <laughs> in science than the, 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 uh, the self-described science, science guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Several times Nye asked for examples of fossils mixed between layers. For instance, right. a, a mammal in a trilobite layer. But really, this is an argument from silence because he, he's basically saying, look, if mammals and trilobites are fossilized together, then they live together. Uh, okay. You know, they're not fossilized together, therefore they didn't live together. Now, Ken never really responded to that, but there certainly is a response. I mean, we don't find coelacanths and whales uh, in, in fossils today, right. but we know they live at the same time in the sea today. Um, for a bit more on that, you can go to creation.com slash silence. But, but let's kick it up a notch. Yeah. Nye could have asked, why don't we find human fossils with right. dinosaur yeah, fossils? Yeah, that would have that's been a, a, more of a zinger question. Yeah, that's a common question. Yeah. Uh, creationists have also answered that one. Yeah. Given the nature of the fossil record and the amount of flood deposited sediment, we wouldn't expect to find human fossils of people who live pre-flood. Yeah. And for details on that, you can have a look at creation.com slash human fossils. Right. Scientists actually find fossils that pose huge problems for evolutionary, uh, evolutionists like Nye. That's right. For example, polystrate fossils, it's the term that uh, is used for fossils that extend through multiple layers. For example, trees or tree-like plants have been found in many places that pass through layers of rock that evolutionists say took a long time to deposit. But that's impossible because yeah. the tree would have rotted, right? It's not going to stand there for millions of years as the sediments uh, build exactly. up. Exactly. They were buried and fossilized quickly. All of the strata must have been laid down in a very, very short time, and then that's great support for catastrophe, not uniformitarianism. And it fits nicely with the biblical uh, record of the flood. It, it sure does. Also in our Creation magazine, we published an article based on data that, uh, that you collected, right. actually, Cal, uh, called The So-Called Age of Dinosaurs. And you wrote that to summarize what scientists have found fossilized along with dinosaurs. Right. That article is now also online. You can read it here, creation.com slash dino age. Right. Well, I wrote it specifically to show that there have been dinosaurs found with modern type creatures. Exactly. Like ducks, platypus, beavers, etc. They've even found a, a, a rabbit that's supposedly 53 <laughs> million years old. Now, at one time, these would have been considered out of order, uh, according to evolutionists. Uh, right. but, but now they're not, of course, because now they've found them. So, so if evolution is falsifiable, as Nye claims, then it's been falsified by its own criteria. Mm. Nye also noted that there are no kangaroo fossils <laughs> showing a migratory path from the Middle East to Australia. Right. Because they would have gone off the ark in the Middle East. Right. And this is easily refuted. Yeah. Uh, for example, lions roamed what roamed in what is now Israel in historical times, yeah. but no lion fossils have ever been found there. Right. In addition, marsupial fossils are actually a huge problem for evolutionists because their fossils aren't found in Australia. <laughs> well, you'd expect them to be. <laughs> exactly. They're found in Europe and South America. Yeah. His point actually highlights the biblical flood, because without catastrophic rapid burial, fossilization of a land creature would be an extremely rare event. Right. And if you want more details on that, uh, have a look at the, this article on biogeography at creation.com slash biogeography. Yeah. Now, uh, Nye claimed that the uh, biblical account of the ark, of course, imposes ridiculous demands on natural selection to produce the variety of species that we see today. And he says to get uh, from the 14,000 animals on the ark to the millions of species we have today, there would have to be uh, 11 new species formed every day, all right, for the past 4,000 yes. years. Um, okay. <laughs> There's a huge error. In his, uh, in his calculation here. Yep. Nye includes modern insects, marine creatures, and microscopic life as having come bacteria. from the land animals. <laughs> yeah, bacteria. Yeah. 
that, that supposedly came from the land animals, he thinks, yeah. taken on the ark. Obviously, he hasn't thought that through. Mm -hmm. Noah wasn't commanded to take fish on the ark, for example, but Nye included that in his calculation. Yeah. Fish, fish and insects and bacteria and so on survived the flood outside the ark. Uh, for details on that, you can see creation.com slash ark critics. Yeah, he obviously didn't do a lot of homework in uh, his he, critiques. He didn't, no. Uh, no, you exclude these creatures, okay, and also you realize that some of the animals that, that are categorized as different Different species are actually based upon pretty superficial differences. Right. It becomes far more feasible, of course, to understand the ark was, a, you know, they could put the animals on the ark. For example, uh, many dog breeds today are, are at most a few hundred years old, showing incredible diversity within living things can, that can make speciation happen very rapidly, right? Right, yeah. So, and of course, we did a show on this, episode two of season two of Creation Magazine Live, the TV show, uh, showing many examples of rapid speciation that were mind blowing to evolutionists. How can this happen so quickly? So, so science supports what the Bible says. For more information on Noah's Ark, uh, to visit our Noah's Ark uh, question and answer page here at uh, creation.com slash Noah. And Nye claims that evolutionists made a prediction that there would be an intermediate species between fish and tetrapod, tetrapods, yeah. and then said that the famous tectalic <laughs> fills this gap. Now, that's an easy one to refute. Yeah, I mean, this famous supposed intermediate uh, has been dethroned by evolutionists yes. themselves, and the science guy wasn't even aware of it. Uh, you know, footprints from a tetrapod were found in layers dated millions of years older than Tiktaalik. So obviously it wasn't an intermediate between non-walking and walking creatures, sure. right? Yep. Uh, the intermediate can't be younger than what it gives rise to. And uh, for details on that, uh, go to creation.com, Tiktaalik dash finished. Another assertion Nye made multiple times was that creationists do not make predictions. First, if he claims that predictions prove a theory, he's committing an elementary logical fallacy mm -hmm. called affirming the consequent. And for, for details on that, have a look at creation.com slash logic. However, Nye's claim uh, is, is demonstrably force, uh, false anyway. For instance, creationist physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys predicted that Mercury's magnetic field would display specific characteristics based on biblical assumptions about its origin and its age. Right which were proven correct. See his article, you can see Dr. Humphrey's article on, uh, on Mercury's magnetic field is young at creation.com slash mercmagyoung. Mm -hmm. And another team of uh, creation scientists while focusing research on radioisotope dating uh, methods made predictions about the amount of helium left in zircons based on a young age, a young uh, age of the Earth, which was proven accurate. And this research actually uh, actually powerfully refuted a fundamental assumption in radioisotope dating right. that yeah. nuclear decay, ra decay rates have always been constant, which they've now shown isn't true. Yeah. So for details on this, go to creation.com slash rate. Yeah, some, some real breakthroughs there. Yes. In biology, creationists from before Darwin until the present day have realized that many creatures were descended from a comparatively few arc kinds. So they realized that there must have been rapid variation, not as absurd as Nye's caricature though, but indeed, speedy speciation has surprised evolutionists and pleased creationists. And for more information, you can look at creation.com slash speedy. Yep. Now, the five minute rebuttal time, it was kind of insufficient for either debater to really respond sure. to, to the other's yeah. 30 minute uh, presentation, which is one of the reasons why the debate might not be the best measure of who has the best arguments. Uh, that being said, neither seemed to sufficiently acknowledge or answer the other's challenges, to be honest. For instance, Ken Ham spent a good part of the beginning of his presentation showing examples of creation scientists who have made real contributions to their fields. But Bill Nye ignored these examples and kept repeating his argument about the importance of evolution in education to produce engineers and scientists right. and so on. Now, the fact that Newton, Pasteur, who, who Nye actually mentioned, uh, Faraday, et cetera, were all biblical creationists uh, seems not to have really sunk into <laughs> Nye's thinking there. Nye seemed very uninformed regarding his depiction of creation science, right. uh, as every argument he presented has been dealt with at length in creation publications that are widely available, for example, on creation.com. Yeah. And his mantra about evolution being necessary for scientific advancement is demonstrably false. We were never told why someone can't do engineering or other real science unless you, you believe in goo to you evolution. He ignored the growing number of qualified PhD scientists who recognized the Bible's account of origins as right. historical. Yep. He ignored the fact that biblical creationism was the tr traditional understanding of, of Genesis until uniformitarianism, geology, and Darwinism took root. Yeah. Nye is also not a Bible scholar. 
as his sure. limited comments about Bible translation and interpretation show. Yeah. He claimed that the Bible was translated in a way that's analogous to the telephone game. You know, the telephone game, you yeah, have yeah. a string and or, or, exactly. or whisper the even, thing to the next person. Even many atheists commenting on the debate afterwards said that that was a totally <laughs> false argument. But anyway, <laughs> we, we've got more manuscripts of the Bible than for any other ancient book. And, and they're also f far closer in time to the originals than any other document of antiquity. Right. By, by his standards, we shouldn't be able to trust any ancient book, which they do, of course, and teach yes. out of in schools. Now, our, our booklet, How Do We Get Our Bible? And Is It the Word of God? Uh, details some of these things. And you can click the link uh, if you're interested in getting a copy. Um, also, our, our book, Christianity for Skeptics, also has uh, plenty of detail as well on that. Our, our debate analysis article is now the most commented on article of the, the nearly 10,000 at creation.com. Yeah. There are comments congratulating Ken for uh, clearly presenting the gospel, yep. and, and that's commendable. Yes, yeah, what a platform. As believers, we certainly want to share the, the most important part of this debate with the people, and, and that's the gospel, yeah. right? However, many of the uh, commenters are informed creationists and realize that Ham could have uh, been more assertive in, in demanding answers to arguments against evolution and kind of holding nice feet to the fire when he, when he failed to respond to these challenges. He could have pointed out that uh, admittedly by evolutionists, yeah. fraudulent, outdated, and disproven information like Haeckel's embryo drawings, yeah. vestigial organs, junk DNA, supposed 98% similar DNA between humans and apes, yeah. etc., etc., are still used in textbooks today. Yeah. In addition, he should have used key scientific evidence supporting creation as the best model of origins. Exactly. Now, let, let's do some of that right now. What are some of the best evidences that support creation? There are many, of course, are, but yes. let's just talk about three that didn't appear in the debate. How about evidence of rapid geological processes at Mount St. Helens? Uh, how about fresh, uh, you know, soft um, uh, tissue in dinosaur bones, right? And this research has been done primarily by evolutionist uh, Dr. Mary Schweitzer. Um, how about information theory? These are all great things that you know could have been hammered home. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'll start with team. Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a volcano in Washington State. It erupted in 1980, producing some shocking features. Here's a picture of a canyon that was cut in a single day. It's about 600 feet across, what you're looking at here. There's a river in the bottom of the canyon, but that river didn't cause the canyon. Rather, the canyon caused the river. Right. A close-up view of the wall of the canyon reveals these extremely fine layers, just millimeters thick. But what you're looking at is a part of a 15 foot a thick uh, layer uh, of mud now turned to rock that was laid down in three hours. These fine layers therefore didn't, uh, you know, must have formed in seconds as the mud was being deposited. And, and this is enough to refute Nye's claim that these uh, layers of course take many, many years uh, to lay down. Right, and, and there's other interesting things that happen at Mount St. Helens and what we saw there did some interesting things, uh, but if a few little mud flows can do some cool stuff like that. Yeah. The question is, what would a global <laughs> flood do? Yeah. What happened at Mount St. Helens helps us to understand what could have been accomplished geologically during the flood. Right. Now, years ago, Ken Ham himself wrote an article on this exact topic. It was featured in our Creation magazine. You can read it online at creation.com slash excited. Right. Another scientific discovery that powerfully refutes the evolutionary time scale is the discovery of soft tissue in dinosaur bones. Now, right. beginning back in the 1990s, uh, many different kinds of biological material um, has been found in, in dinosaur bones uh, and since then, including dinosaur blood, soft tissue, blood vessels, different kinds of protein, and dinosaur DNA. Dino DNA. Yeah. This <laughs> is a massive problem for evolution. All of this material should have been uh, disintegrated, uh, you know, uh, from dinosaurs if they existed 65 million years ago. How could right. it still be there? Absolutely. Scientists have suggested that if the bone with all that biological material inside could be frozen solid, <laughs> DNA may last 6.8 million years. Yeah. 6.8 million. Not 65. No, no, not 65. By which, uh, at that time, it would be fragmented into single letters. But it wasn't frozen solid. One of the main dig sites for this stuff is in Montana. <laughs> for details, have a look at this link here, creation.com slash dino DNA bone cells. Now you can scroll down the article 
for a list of other articles detailing all of the other material that has been found and the attempts by evolutionists to try to counter that. Of course. Now, information theory. This is a massive challenge to, to is, evolution as well. Yeah. All living things uh, today have copious amounts of decoded genetic information and, and also the machinery to read, to decode that information. Yeah, the genetic code. Exactly. Code. But coded information has always been known to come from an intelligent mind. I yeah. mean, if, if I take a piece of chalk and write, hi, my name's Cal, on a chalkboard, people understand that the information didn't come from the chalk, didn't come from the matter, it came from right. my mind. So think about it. To be an atheistic evolutionist like Bill Nye, you have to believe that at some time in the past, matter, uh, with no mind, created a coded language system while at the same time, a decoding device for that particular code, not a different code, spontaneously evolved. Now, that, that, that's simply ridiculous. It not is. based on what we don't know, but based on what we do know from science and what we observe today. That's right. Uh, that brings up the topic of abiogenesis, mm -hmm. life from lifelessness, <laughs> which evolutionists typically avoid like the plague, <laughs> even to the point of some of them trying to say it's not part of evolution theory so that they can avoid the, the tremendous difficulties involved. Yeah. And it's not hard to see why. Evolution requires the breaking of a known scientific law, mm -hmm. the law of biogenesis that says life only comes from life. Right. But when scientific laws are broken, we call that a miracle. Right. So the origin of life, whichever way you want to slice it, requires a miracle. Now, we're good with that. Of course, we have a miracle <laughs> maker. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's obviously a problem for the naturalist. Uh, but anyway, for more information, for more on that, uh, which many evolutionists call, they call a chemical evolution, you can see creation.com slash abio so for abiogenesis. Right. Now, all the way through the debate, you know, Nye is clearly concerned that if students are not taught evolution, uh, if they're taught creation, that of course this is going to hinder scientific progress. Yes, yes. And, and of course, there was a number of ways that this could have been addressed. Firstly, he, he consistently lumps evolution in with science, which it isn't. So evolution isn't science. You can actually see this article here, uh, creation.com, it's not science. And, and secondly, and we've already mentioned this, many of the greatest scientists were creationists. Right. The biblical worldview didn't hinder their work. Uh, not only that, but Nye doesn't seem to know what historians of science realize, that modern science flourished under a Christian worldview. The historical basis of modern science depended on the assumption that the universe was made by an, by an orderly, rational creator. Right. An orderly universe makes perfect sense only if it was made by an orderly creator, and that's how the Bible describes God. Exactly. For details on that, have a look at creation.com slash roots. Thirdly, evolution has actually hindered scientific progress. This it is has. a point that should have been nailed. Scientific advances don't have uh, the slightest thing to do with evolution. Computers, smartphones, airplanes, the internet certainly didn't, right? No. You know, uh, and, and here, here's a number of articles on that topic. You, you can check out here, creation.com slash science. Now, this debate will probably be insufficient to convert many from one view to the other, right. as most debates are. While people love debates due to their adversarial nature, it yeah. may not be the best format in which to hash out the issues in sufficient death, uh, depth due to uh, the restrictions of time. Yeah, but debates are great for bringing the subject to people's attention, right? Yes. Uh, but yes. Not, not really for training and equipping. Uh, what's important is what happens in the days and weeks to come, actually, from, yeah. from the debate. One report estimates that over a million people tuned in and watched the debate about creation versus evolution. The turnout shows that it's not just, it, it, it's not by any stretch a settled issue in the minds of many people, regardless of what the media portrays or how much the evolutionists want to control the turf and censor out other views. Exactly. Uh, as such, it's vitally important for believers to be prepared to give an answer with gentleness and respect, as it says in 1 Peter 3.15. Many people disbelieve the Bible because their view of origins excludes the biblical account and, and, and thus, of course, the gospel. Yes. And, and we've found that creation evangelism is an effective way to reach people with the gospel. By, by sharing information with uh, people that shows them that the Bible is true, it opens them up uh, to considering what Christ did on the cross. Right, yeah. Today's technology makes that kind of thing easy. Share this video with others who are struggling to see the evidence for creation the evidence that supports the Bible. Right. The bottom line is this. Creation is a viable model of origin in today's modern scientific era. See you next time on Genesis Unleashed.